Hello, Rick off here. Welcome to video number 36 of Rick's Pipe Dream Magnetic Motor Generator Project Series. In this video, I will be performing an elapsed time test of a new rotor magnet layout using the XNote stopwatch software application and external triggering of on-off and snap time functions by the use of switches mounted on the Pipe Dream prototype. Before I show you the actual triggering method I will be using, I would like to start out by explaining the new rotor magnet layout. As you can see here, the stator magnet with the south and north poles is directly aligned with the beginning of the first metal plate mounted to the Pipe Dream prototype flywheel. And it's directly in line with two magnets, two rotor magnets. These rotor magnets are a north facing up rotor magnet on the left and a south facing up rotor magnet on the right. So this will be my starting position for the uh, timer to begin. After this first position you'll see that uh, there are one, two, three, four more magnets mounted in line. These are all north facing up rotor magnets. So what we have then, what we have in this group is one, two, three, four, five, six magnets. The six magnets in each and every rotor magnet grouping. Now we come to the second group and here again it's just like the beginning of the first group. You see we had the two magnets. Okay, so at the beginning of the second group we again have two magnets oriented the same way and this is followed up by one, two, three, four more magnets directly in line and these magnets these are all uh, south facing up rotor magnets. Now we get to the uh, be beginning of the third group and again we're doubled up with a north facing rotor magnet and a south facing rotor magnet. So you might say that uh, that the beginning of each successive group is actually also the end the ending of the uh, preceding group uh, because that th these points every time there's a double uh, we're going to trigger a snap function uh, so it'll be like a snapshot in time at each one of these intersections where there's two rotor magnets so at the end of the third group we have another double and this is of course the midpoint here and one two three four and then a double one two three four and a double see how we just keep alternating from one side to the other for each group one two three four a double and I'm ending this with uh, two magnets because that's all I had room for and uh, it was important to carry this out so that uh, we would still have throughput all the way to the end and that way I could still get my snap time at the final end. Now I would like the point of contact of a roundhead brass screw coming around in this uh, counterclockwise direction. I'd like the point of contact to be as close as possible to the end of the lever switch. Now you can see right here on the flywheel I've made a pencil mark and the pencil mark is directly in line with the very tip end of the switch. Now the reason for this is that I want the timing mark to occur right here because uh, as the screw comes by, it's going to push the uh, lever 
in and actuate the switch but the switch uh, doesn't actually turn the Xnote stopwatch software on until it goes past the end of the uh, lever and allows the lever to flip back again to, the, to this position. Now I'll also need to make a slight adjustment for the uh, half the uh, diameter of the head on the on the brass screw. Okay, and, and that would be equal, I measured it up, it's uh, about a four millimeter head in diameter. And uh, so I need to make that a two millimeter adjustment. I'll need to bring another mark out two millimeters from this one further out. And, uh, and then I'll continue that mark down over the side over the edge of the flywheel. This is how the marks look after they're laid out. Next, the brass screws are inserted at the marked locations, turned in, and then turned out just enough so that they actuate each of the switches. So first we have the start actuation. followed by the next screw which is contacting the lower switch and that's a snap time so we have a snap we come to the next one and that's another snap and another snap another snap Another snap. And here we have two screws at the end. And this will be a stop followed by a snap. What you are now looking at is a uh, device that I made up to lock the flywheel prior to any time tests. Uh, this is going to ensure that the test always starts at precisely the same position. And uh, this is simply a wooden handle and into which I inserted a quarter inch aluminum rod. Uh, the rod sticks out about five inches beyond the handle. And uh, this goes through the PVC upright of the prototype and as I push the rod through it will enter the edge of the flywheel uh, about a quarter inch deep and uh, this locks up the flywheel. This is going to ensure that the test always starts at precisely the same position. Now as you can see I've set up my computer monitor on the floor alongside of the Pipe Dream prototype so that we can see the timing readings uh, at the very top, I have a, a reading of 7.49 in uh, with an orange background. Now this this little window represents the uh, timing of the last test that we did, uh, the previous rotor magnet layout, 7.49 seconds or 7 and 49 one hundredths. Now down below that. We have a uh, yellow background with black digits and this will be the current uh, test time shown here. I'm ready and I'm going to start now by pulling the pin. Okay, here goes. Okay. So that was nice, uh, 5.74 seconds, or 5 and 74 one hundredths. And as you can see, the uh, results window is populated. And I'm going to zoom in on that now so that we can see uh, the results a little better. And here are the results of the X Note Stopwatch results window. 
and I'll give you a further explanation of the test results in the next video.